Hey, what is up guys and welcome for another Wulong build video. This armor set here is now probably the strongest grace set in the game. We all know how strong the Limbao set is and it's been a standard go-to grace set through the game's life. But now with the new DLC, we got a set that is so ridiculous they can absolutely destroy bosses with next to no effort at all. I have hardly ever had a fight with this set that made me feel like I won't be able to beat the bosses. Even Tai Shi Chi, who is now considered the strongest boss, doesn't stand a chance. Fighting bosses while even being below 10 or 20 morale doesn't even matter just because of the sheer damage that you can do. This set is just totally ridiculous, so let's get right into the build. The armor set that I'm talking about using today is the great set of Zurong. It is one of the new great sets that came with the expansion, so I'm not sure if you can acquire this if you don't have the expansion or not. This set is pretty unique. What it does is that when you use a weapon that is imbued with an element, you will deal an equal amount of fire damage in addition to the elemental damage dealt from your weapon. So let's say I have a weapon imbued with ice. You can see here that when I attack, I deal a total of 84 ice damage with my weapon. So without this set, we get a total of 200 physical damage and 84 ice damage. Now with the set activated, we can see that now we do 85 ice damage as well as around 85 flame damage as well. So basically, whichever element you use, you'll get around the same amount of fire damage added on top of it for free. Even though on normal occasions on bosses like this guy, who are completely immune to fire, if you try to do any sort of flame damage, will always deal zero, no damage at all. Here it doesn't matter. If your eyes does 100 damage, then your flame damage will also be 100. Doesn't matter if they're immune to it or not, the amount of flame damage will always be equal to what you deal with your weapon. If they are immune, they will not get inflicted with burns, but you will still get that flame damage regardless. This is what makes the set so strong. You are dealing 3 forms of damage with each hit. Your main physical damage, your weapon imbued elemental damage, and flame damage is added on top of it. The damage can just go so crazy when you get to the higher morale. You can kill bosses with just your light attacks on its own. Even if you don't have high morale, you can still do more damage than probably any other set in the game. So for this build, you will need 5 pieces of the great set of Zurong, 2 pieces of the instigator of evil set, and one piece of the set bonus mitigation. With the 5 pieces of Zurong being the most important, the 2 pieces of the instigator of evil set will give us bonus elemental damage, which will boost the damage of our elemental attacks from our weapons. It is not super important to have, but it can be really good. Now looking at our weapons, I personally used quite a few for this build. The best weapons that you can use for this are the ones that have really long martial arts that you can use endlessly. So instead of which weapons you can use, I will show off which martial arts work great with this build. Then you can go ahead and decide which works best for you. Firstly using the sword and probably still the most strongest martial art in the game, Turning Clouds is going to be your strongest choice. It's got the most DPS and you can move very freely with this move. Then on the hammer with the martial arts rising tides. This is quite strong and since you are not locked in place, it's one of the better options for this build. Hammers are slow to use, but with this you can kill bosses pretty quickly if you get the martial arts going. Probably one of my new favorite martial arts now is the antelope horn. This is just such a fun move to use. Especially against the smaller mid bosses and some human bosses, you can literally put them in a juggle state where they can't do anything at all. Even if any enemy comes into range of the attack, they will straight away get launched up. It's such a fun move to play with and you guys surely need to try this out. Then we also have the dual blades with the martial arts endless flowering and blossom stream. Both are quite similar and can be chained endlessly. This attack can be good in very few situations if you have high morale and if you are fighting an aggressive enemy. You are going to be locked in place which is why it's not going to be the best option but the damage output is still pretty good. Those are just some of the martial arts that work really well. And now as for our stats on your weapon, we need to enchant it with ice. There is a reason why we go for ice rather than any other element. That is because we will deal free flame damage regardless of which element we go for. Whenever an enemy is affected with burns, they will actually take increased ice damage. Let me show you again. With my weapon on its own, we do around 85 ice damage while burn isn't inflicted. After the enemy gets inflicted with burns, we now deal 110 ice damage. 
it's a significant boost in damage once again for free just because we're inflicting burns. Using ice is going to be your best option. Then some other stats that you need on your weapon is ice resistance penetration, hopefully in the premium slot to get the most out of it. Some ice attack power and melee attack power if you have any more slots available. Once again it doesn't matter what you get for on a secondary weapon as long as you get the required set bonuses that I mentioned. I do suggest that you add a different element to your secondary weapon just in case you come across an enemy who is immune to ice. The same goes for your ranged weapons as well. Get whichever ones that will give you your set bonuses. Now for our main armor pieces, try to get the set bonuses on medium or light armor. That is because the stats that we need, the main damage dealer is the elemental imbued weapon damage and that can only be put on light or medium weight armor. So in order to get the highest damage possible, try to get your set on light or medium armor. You will need ice attack power and elemental imbued weapon damage probably in your premium slots. Morale rank points gained and whatever you choose to run is a secondary element. I tend to keep it to lightning so I added in lightning attack power. Other effects that are good to add on are burns accumulation on enemies so you can inflict them with burns faster and damage amplification on fatal strikes and critical blows. If you are using any heavy armor pieces, I suggest you add in elemental damage as a special effect since you won't get to use the elemental imbued weapon damage. And then as for your accessories, try to get the same effects that you have on your armor. On your accessories, try to get some form of power gain or damage reduction effects. And as for our spells, we once again have all the buffs on one set and all of our enchantments on the other. Enhanced Defense and Absorb Vitality is given at this point and you should probably have it on at all of your builds. Use Amplified Damage only if you add a higher morale or equal morale than the enemy that you are fighting, otherwise it's just gonna get you killed. Our Power Burst is what we will use to boost the damage of our martial arts. Then for the other set we have our Lightning Enchantment, Flame Enchantment and Ice Enchantment. Using your Ice one on top of what you already have equipped as your special effect on your weapon will boost the ice damage even further. So always try to have the second ice enchantment on as well. As for our divine beast, we use Bixie to give us more weapon imbued damage and morale rank points gained. And that is it for all of our gear and items. So now let's have a quick look at our virtue points. We fully max out on our water to get as much ice damage as we can. Around 100 in wood to get a good amount of lightning damage as well as our spell durations. 60 in fire so we get a good amount of cost reduction on our martial arts. Just 20 in earth just so we get a little bit lighter and move faster. And around 49 in metal to reduce the cost of our visory spells. And that is it for the build and everything you will need to put it together. The Zurong armor set is by far the strongest just for the shit damage you can dish out. Using the sword with the turning clouds can literally melt bosses faster than anything else in the game. Even the new DLC bosses don't stand a chance. With the high resistance to ice that the boss has, he is still destroyed in seconds. The only thing your morale is needed for in this build is just for the fact that you take increased damage. You can easily kill bosses even at zero morale. I was able to finish the final mission on the thousand mile journey at zero morale and Lubu here still died so easily. Using this build isn't difficult at all. Before the start of any fight, make sure you get all your buffs before you move forward to spawn the boss. Try to always attack with your ice enchant so you can deal damage ridiculously quickly. As for everything else, the smaller enemies will most likely die in just a few light attacks. If your morale is high, you can even kill bosses with just your light attacks alone. Your damage altogether is more than enough to take out those 50 morale bosses. I hope you all enjoyed the build and found it helpful. Zurong is now going to be your go-to set if you want the most damage and the fastest time possible to kill bosses. With so many weapons and martial arts that can make this build work, you have lots of options that you can go for. I will have more fun and exciting builds coming so stay tuned for more. I will catch you all next time.